Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Rachel Varga. I'm a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. And what I love to do is help you really uncover how to really optimize your body, mind, spirit, energy to bring forth inner and outer beauty together and radiance. And I love digging into what radiance is that goes beyond your basic skincare. But today we have a really cool guest. We got Katie. She's a type A self-made biohacker. And she actually reached out to me recently and had all these great questions. Like, Rachel, can I interview you? I have all these skin questions that, you know, my audience, because Katie's a YouTuber, that are just dying to hear all about. So thanks so much, Katie, for tuning in. And I can't wait to answer your questions. Thank you, Rachel. It is such an honor to be talking to you. And I am so excited to get into the weeds of all things skincare. Yeah, well, I'm happy to help share my insight and spread a little love and light and skin radiance on that inner and outer plane and all that good stuff together. Fantastic. Great. So um, first off, just for, for people who are um, tuning in for the first time, just give us a little brief introduction about yourself and how did you get into skincare in the first place? Oh, this is a fun question. So I am what you consider a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. And what that means is I have my bachelor's of science in nursing from the University of Victoria. And over the last 10 years, I've helped people with their in-clinic rejuvenation. And then about two years ago, I started to offer online virtual skin consultations. The reason why was because when people were seeing me in the clinic for my community, they'd gone to other clinics and say maybe had like a free 15, 30 minute consult. And then they met with me and I spent an hour with them. Yes, I charge for that time because you're just getting so much info, right? And, and they're like, whoa, this is like way different from what I experienced at this other place. And I thought, that's not okay for just people in my community to access. People all over deserve to really have this information on especially what some of the most science-backed products and technologies are out there. Because it's all about the science of beauty and bringing that research to the forefront, not, you know, trying to sell laser packages or microneedling packages. It's like, what, what's actually going to work and create the changes that people want to see based on what they're spending their time and money on. And to answer your question about how I got into the field, well, I actually got into the field because I, 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 I had an initial skin treatment myself. So I finished my bachelor's of science in nursing I went on to be a pediatric trach vent nurse. So I worked with children who breathe through holes in their neck and were on ventilators. And then I had a skin treatment myself at that point. I was taking my medical school prerequisites. I really you know, thought about becoming a naturopath or also a medical physician. I had my first skin treatment and I thought, ah, oh, I didn't really get that much education beforehand or aftercare information. And I feel like I have a really good eye for you know, right relationship, proportionality, aesthetics, all of that. My father's a carpenter, so he instilled at me at a really young age, you know, balance and symmetry and, and all of this cool stuff. So that's actually how I got into rejuvenation. And, and I thought for sure, you know, I might work in an aesthetic clinic for a year and then go off to med school. But I found my passion helping women who really develop their inner and outer beauty together. That's amazing. Yeah. It was such, it sounds like it was so intuitive, you know, you just kind of felt like there was a need in the market and it's so great that you use that as like a call to action and, and a way to make a change. Yeah. Now your skin is flawless and okay. I'm sure you get that a lot. Walk us through your, your regular skin routine, both your morning and your evening and anything else in between. Sure. Well, when I was about 25, you know, looking back on photos before I started to get into the industry and, you know, I had, you know, I had a facial then I started with my medical grade skincare then and a few other things, but I thought my skin was pretty good. But looking back, I had some brown spots. I had some bumps on my forehead that weren't like breakouts, but just kind of like bumps and irregularities. And then I was also acne prone, but I was healthy then. I thought I had pretty decent skin. But then once I started on medical grade skincare, and this is what I work with, uh, both in the clinic and online, I work with about 10 different medical grade brands. These, these awesome top brands in the world, they want to work with me because they know that I'm really just wanting to offer people the best of the best. So 
the medical grade skincare that I work with is very different than what you're getting from the pharmacy or the department store or the beauty store. And so these are basically backed by product. These products are, are backed by research and they're pretty well exclusive to physicians and nurses in the aesthetic field. So it's even quite different than what your medical dermatologist might even recommend. That's one of your questions that I know you're going to get to. Um, but basically it's just, it's like taking a multivitamin for your skin, right? Like type a biohacker, hello. Your recent video is talking about this magical blue pill that uh, I want to hear all about too. And it's just all part of that, right? You're feeding your body on the inside, body, mind, spirit, energy, and then you're feeding it on the outside too. So it's not just your skincare actually, it's what you're doing inside, it's thoughts, everything. But to make it super simple, on my website, rachelvarga.ca, you can actually register for my newsletter and I send you my treatment planning guide. And for listeners here, I'll give you guys a skin cheat sheet, a little extra freebie for you guys, basically highlighting my top five tips. Got to cleanse the skin morning and night with a medical grade cleanser for your needs. So I'm acne prone, so I need a little salicylic acid in there. Moisturize, feed the skin morning and night with things like vitamin C, E, hyaluronic acid, peptides, mineral-based sunscreen like this TZO3 here. Uh, this has got zinc and titanium in it. Uh, titanium dioxide, 8%, zinc oxide, 3.8%. Uh, you really want that, uh, in my experience, higher concentration of titanium versus the higher concentration of zinc. So you don't get that white cast and a separate standalone mineral-based sunscreen not a sunscreen mixed in your moisturizer or foundation. And then, you know, exfoliating the skin a couple of times a week with something that isn't going to be too abrasive. Great. That's fantastic. And um, I definitely picked up on um, the idea of using a derma roller a couple of times a week yes. to help with that exfoliation. And I have, I, you know, I've only been using it for about a month, but I really have started to notice some textural differences in Good. my skin. And that's, you know, that that's for sure something that um, I have you to think. And because I had not really actually heard much about derma rollers before. And in the limited uh, knowledge I had about derma rollers, I wasn't really sure what millimeter. So we'll get mm -hmm. into that. But um, but yeah, that's kind of been part of my routine as well. Now, you mentioned acne. And I too had suffered from acne a little bit later in life. I was actually mm -hmm. in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And Me too. Um, yeah, and it, and it was a, it was a devastating time for me. I actually went on Accutane for a year, which I kind of look back and I might regret having done that. But mm -hmm. I, I was desperate at the time. It was mm -hmm. just I, I felt like, you know, I had I tried all these sorts of creams and I was mm -hmm. using salicylic acid. And I, what was I doing wrong? Had I thought about my diet, maybe that would have made a huge difference. But Goodbye. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, wow, yeah. you were eating all this crap. Mm -hmm. but, and stress, of course, played a role in it. But um, for my acne scars, they're really, really minute. But when I don't have makeup on, I do still see them. And it still kind of reminds me of that time. And so I'm just curious if you have any suggestions, because I'm sure there's a lot of men and women out there that still have residual acne scars. What would be your advice to people looking to clear those up? Yeah. Well, first of all, what kind of acne scars are they? Are they red or are they textured? Mine are red. Okay. So the red type of acne scar is actually called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, right? Uh, or PIH. And what this means is your skin's gone through a bit of an inflammatory process from having a breakout. And then the red, the, the red skin is basically, it's just leftover inflammation. So what you can do to mitigate that from happening when you get a breakout is wear your sunscreen every freaking day. Even if your feet hit the floor because UVA rays, which are like the cloudy days right, right here, they actually re reach pretty deep in the skin. The sunny days, UVB rays, they actually reach more shallow into the skin. But those are the days when people are more likely to put their skincare and sunscreens on. But thanks to our devices, our iPhones, laptops, Blu-rays, way deeper than all of the other ones. Yeah, jaw drop, I know, right? Wow. So if your feet hit the floor, you've got to put your 
mineral-based sunscreen on every day and use products that are going to mitigate the inflammation in your skin. And one of the products that I actually like to recommend for this, obviously recommendations are going to be different for everybody. If you, you do need to know what's going to be specific for you, which I uncover in a virtual consult, she can book with me. But for me, what I need to do is actually use a spot treatment with a little bit of benzoyl peroxide, illegal peptide 10, which is a natural antimicrobial agent, put that on the spot. And I used to suffer from that too, red acne scars. And since I started implementing that little spot treatment, it's like less than $35 Canadian. Uh, that's, that's a really key one for me, feeding the skin and then sunscreen. But there are some other laser options too that are available. So for example, the lasers like, um, you know, intense pulse light technologies, there's different types of qualities of IPL lasers out there. So not all lasers that are of the same type are the same. There's difference between brands. It's like different types of chocolate bars, right? Kit Kat's different than from an O'Henry, but they're still a chocolate bar, right? But one we are gonna enjoy better, whatever. This is a terrible example because you should not be eating that stuff anyways. But, you know, maybe let's think about our hair products, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I, I L'Oreal versus, uh, you know, Kerastase or something, you know? Yeah. You know where I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah, I totally get it. But for me, that's how I've mitigated it. But for the most part, that leftover redness, the laser intense pulse light, the chromophore for the light is reds or browns of the skin. So that type of tech has been proven, and this is very well established in the, in the literature, that it helps to remove the redness from a breakout. Great. That, those are wonderful uh, tips. And I'll be sure to include that in the um, description of my video below. But um, for that spot treatment you talked about, how often do you do that? Oh, if I have an active breakout, I'll put that spot treatment on like once or twice a day until it's gone. And it just makes it go away faster. It kind of dries it out a little bit and then it just flakes off. Cool. Mm -hmm. So a large majority of my audience are men. Um, yep. I, I've recently turned my fiance onto derma rolling. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We have a really good, consistent, um, you know, skin hygiene routine, but awesome. I'm curious, what advice do you give men that come into your clinic that are, are looking to invest in maybe one or two products there, you know, for women, we're, we're kind of used to having tons of makeup and tons of skincare products. And I'm totally fine with that. But my fiance, and I know a lot of my guy friends just want like one or two simple, basic things. What, if you could kind of just narrow things down, what advice would you give or what products are a good starting point for guys? Oh, I love getting asked this question <laughs> because I actually work with a lot of male celebrities online through a virtual consult. And, you know, sometimes they'll see me in the office, uh, but my most famous patients are men. And men, I find, actually, they really want to learn this info. I just did a consultation for a lovely man who, who was 40 yesterday from California. And I obviously won't say his name, but he's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much I learned. You made this all seem so easy. My routine doesn't need to be complicated. And guys love the dermal roller because it doesn't hurt, right? It shouldn't hurt. My husband's a six-time pro world champion kickboxer. His name's Gabriel Varga. And I have to say, he's my biggest wimp in the office. It's hilarious. He can barely even tolerate a chemical peel, let alone a laser treatment. But anyways, I, like I said before, that's, that's a whole other topic. But he does well with the dermal roller. So for you guys listening, I love working with men. Uh, because I just, I love seeing the light bulb go off, like the mind just exploding, like, oh my gosh, it's really that simple. Well, it's, I make it simple, right? So following just a basic routine, cleanse morning and night, moisturize morning and night, sunscreen, exfoliate a couple times a week. Those are the bare minimums. You do not want to jump into a roller until you have your basic routine dialed in. This is where people go wrong. They message me, where do I have a roller? Where do I get a roller? How do I use it? Well, you have to kind of have your basics first so that if you develop redness and irritation from say your active ingredient, like you should be using your roller with the copper peptide and vitamin serum, which I help people uh, uncover. No, you cannot get, uh, I do not sell the roller and the appropriate products to go along with that on my e-store without a consultation for a reason, because people are always using them wrong. They just go straight into the roller or they try and buy them off China 
from China off eBay or Amazon and they're just full of heavy metals. Um, so you have to get your basic routine first, right? So your morning and night routine, cleanse, moisturize, sunscreen, and scrub. Then use the active ingredients that you're gonna be using your roller with. Get your skin used to some of the, the skin active so that you don't get too much redness and irritation that can last for a couple of weeks if you're not careful. And that's embarrassing for guys. Guys don't want redness. And then you integrate rolling. So two weeks with your basics, two weeks with the actives for rolling, and then do your rolling. But you, it's never the, the opposite way around. Yeah. Don't put the cart before the horse or whatever that saying is. Yeah. I, I tell that to people who are interested in getting into biohacking for the first time too. Like you mm-hmm. need to start with your basics, yep. start eating clean, start mm-hmm. sleeping and exercise in the right way. And yeah. you will start and then start adding because yeah. if you just jump to nootropics or, you know, red light therapy or something crazy, you, you're, miss, you're missing out on your foundation. So mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. could not agree more. So let's um, switch gears and talk a little bit about skin aging and what kind of role genetics plays. So I'll, I'll be completely honest. My grandmother was 99. She, God bless her. She had the most, most youthful skin. I mean, she looked like she was in her late seventies when she was in her late nineties. And my mom is kind of the same way, you know, she's got this youthful, uh, beautiful skin. And so I'm just wondering, you know, I I do take good care of my skin, but how much of a role do you think genetics weighs into your whole skin aging process? Well, I mean, it's kind of the same for your body type, right? If you're going to be overweight or if you're going to be fit and healthy and shredded, right? So your genetics is not a death sentence. So say, for example, you know that you have diabetes in your family, hypertension, some type of cancer. You should know what your genes may be predisposed to. And there's some sweet testing that you can do now for you know, lab works, genetic testing to isolate your detox pathways, how you need to support your physiology. So Google this stuff all you want. But until you get your own labs done, that's how you can really start to biohack yourself more effectively based on your physiology. So if, say, someone in your, your family is you know, prone to the double chin, well, take a look around. Is everybody else in your family 10, 20 pounds overweight? Not a surprise. However, some people will be predisposed to certain facial aging things based on their, their bone structure of, say, their, their skull, right? So some of us, I know I, I had this, I was actually born with a slightly recessed jaw, so it was actually set back a little bit, right? So I had a little bit of an overbite, and for my bite and a whole bunch of other things, I had that corrected surgically. So sometimes when we have a recession of the lower mandible, which actually happens normally with age, you can hear about me talk about this in the Um, the Bulletproof Radio podcast, episode 668, um, The Science of Beauty, Facial Aging, where Dave Asprey picks my brain on this stuff, we naturally get a recession here. So there are ways to basically mitigate the aging process, but just know if you're predisposed to certain things in your health, you just have to work a little bit harder to not let that actually impact the way that you age. However, some people, they are in their families, they just have just the way that they're, they're, you know, again, their bony structure of their face. They, everybody in the family might have puffy lower eyelids or hooded upper eyelids or a low set brow. So again, there are ways to, to mitigate that. What are your thoughts on the Vizia face scan? Because I did it about a year ago, just out of curiosity to see how my skin age compared to my biological age. And my results were uh, surprising. I was actually one year older skin age wise than I was my own biological age. So it, but it was kind of great because at the same time I was like, now I have a challenge, you know, now I'm going to try to reverse that. So is that a good place for people to start to kind of get a baseline? Oh, that's interesting. My first question, you probably had a cosmetic consultation. Did they charge you for that? It was actually, um, it was at this place called Next Health in LA. And if you booked a different uh, session, so we did a cryotherapy, it kind of came included. So I did get a 
very minor consultation. It was not okay. a very, like an extended one, but it was, yeah. you know, enough to kind of get a baseline. So you know what I'm talking about, like that 15 to 30 minute free type of consult, very different than, um, you know, what I'm known for across the world. So the Vizia face scan, yeah, awesome. But there's also other photo systems out there. For example, the photo finder, which is a very commonly used uh, photography system in clinics, which I love because some of these other face scans, they basically make your, I have my Tibetan bowl, little mallet here. Um, they make your chin go on the stand. Remember doing that? So yep. what happens if you have that face scan, you miss out what's going on in the neck, right? So with some of the other photo systems, they actually can do like a whole snapshot here. So if you go on my social at Rachel Varga official, you can see some of my before and after photos. They always include basically like the neck and collarbone up because we never want to just think about the face. We want to think about what's going on to the face and the neck so that you don't get floating head syndrome when you're 60. But I love these types of photography equipment to highlight the fact that you know your skin might look pretty good but oh there's some uv damage going on underneath and it shows you what's going on and actually um, with the with the uv uh, setting with the photo finder i did that on myself a year ago and so that was when i was 25 and i'm you know almost 10 years later my photo damage was way better See, look at that. And, and, it's, and it's nice to be able to quantify your, um, you know, what you're doing and how it's actually having an impact. And I mean, I think as a biohacker, that is something that I've always, you know, been seeking with uh, skincare because you can kind of do that with your sleep. You know, I have the aura ring that helps track my sleep. I've got the whoop to help track my fitness. And, and so, you know, I've been looking for something that kind of can give me that, you know, quantitative measurement for my skin. So mm -hmm. that that's wonderful to hear that there are actually even better devices out there than the video scan. So we'll definitely link to some of those below. I'm curious to check it out myself because yeah, I do not want the floating head when I'm in my okay. 60s. <laughs> well, I will, you know, the Vizia scan, it's awesome. It's a great mm -hmm. piece of technology, but basically any clinic you go to, they're going to be taking before and after photos of you. So when I work with patients and in the clinic and you know, I take their baseline photo and then every time I do something, whether it's just basic skincare, I'll still take the photo because two weeks later we can start to see changes in the skin, vibrancy, glassiness, the skin just looking and feeling better, uh, looking brighter. And, you know, then I, I might do some hydrofacial, chemical peel, lasers, injectables, other things. And then we take a look at their photos after they've kind of gone through their journey with me. And two years later, super cool how you can objectively assess the changes, but any good clinic is gonna be taking really good standardized photography. But I have to say, I actually teach internationally all over different physicians and nurses how to do rejuvenation procedures. And a lot of clinics are using their iPhone or their iPad, but unfortunately that's not, um, you know, the distance might be off, the angle of the camera might be off. It, and so with some of these really good uh, photography equipment, uh, technologies that clinics can get, you can like sh uh, overlay like the shadow of your of your face so that you can get really, really accurate before and after photos. Nice. And if somebody does book a consultation with you for the first time and they're not in Canada, um, what kind of photos do you ask for or how do you assess their skin quality? So I assess their skin quality through a virtual call. So say for example, Zoom, it's considered educational entertainment. Before you ever do anything, to change your, your lifestyle or starting any type of new routine, you should always actually check with your physician. So during a one-on-one -on -one call, I can actually assess the skin quality. So that's why many people like to send me questions of, oh, Rachel, what, did, what should I do for this? Or what should I do for that? Here's a quick photo of me. It's actually really difficult for me to assess the skin in a photo I find. That's why I actually like to see you in a call. And so in the clinic, yeah, I have my own standardized photography uh, equipment and things. But when people work with me, I actually make recommendations for clinics in their area. That's one of the really cool um, services that I include in my one-on-one -on -one consult based on, you know, what technologies that could be right for their skin types and uh, also for my network of awesome providers. But the clinics that, that you'll see, they do the photos. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. great. But it's critical for me to see the face in video, I find. Yeah, for sure. Um, and 
So one of those things that I struggle with, and I'm sure a lot of people struggle with, is the overwhelm when you walk into mm. a pharmacy or you know a beauty store, and there are just so many anti-aging serums okay. and products, all promising the same thing. But how how do you kind of uh, you know sort of discern what is complete BS from what actually might help. And mm -hmm. I know you have an e-store, so that's great. And we'll link to that. But is there any, anything that you look for that stands out that you're like, absolutely not? Well, first of all, how the heck are you going to know, right? Or even if you show up to the store and the person is working behind the counter and they're not taking pictures of people walking in and out using a certain routine, you know, they're basically getting educated on what the skincare reps are educating them on. So when you work with a provider like myself, you know, nearly 10 years, over 18,000 procedures I've performed, and I've worked with thousands of people, and I see what they keep coming back for. I see what products people respond well to. So my recommendations are actually based on that. They're based on what I see people actually getting results from. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, no matter where you are in the world, I can help you out, right? And so it's a little bit different than showing up to a clinic and maybe just being sold, like I said before, on some of the laser microneedling PRP packages that they might offer. But what I do recommend is, yes, please share the, the link to my e-store, rachelvarga.ca slash store. And I do highlight some really great medical grade products like Tizo, Is Clinical, Rejudicare. But I work with so many other brands that actually don't allow their products to be listed on an e-store to protect their medical grade brands. So a lot of my favorite products, I actually can't even recommend in my e-store. So if you initially book a consultation with me, I'll go over what those suggestions are. And then you can just email me for reorders and things like that. That's all good. But that's how you can avoid overwhelm is actually by working with a professional, not just showing up to like a retail store. It's very different. And even if people are like, well, I'm trying to save money. Well, guess what? If you're spending, you know, X number of dollars on this $80 product and that doesn't work. And then you spend another hundred here on another product that doesn't work. Like over time, you're spending so much money that you're throwing out. And I've had that happen yeah. to me on a number of occasions. Mm -hmm. So rather than wasting all your money on products that are just not helpful for your skin type, book a consultation, get a tailored, personalized yep. consult and get the product that is actually going to work for you. And it might even be, you know, kind of secret, something that you can't find anywhere else. The ex exclusivity is awesome. And I, I'm sure that, you know, that is, is something that um, so many people can benefit from for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I just love helping people. And what's really funny is when I say come up with a basic routine for someone, like for example, this this very handsome man who was, you know, 40 from California yesterday, it's like, oh my gosh, your recommendations are way less. Like what I'm spending in um, three months of skincare with your recommendation, I was spending in a month with what I was doing before. And it doesn't, more expensive doesn't mean that it's better more steps doesn't mean that it's better because if you start to layer too many active ingredients like vitamin C, E, hyaluronic acid, retinol, all sorts of things, peptides, they could actually start to interact with one another. So when you simply work with formulations that are made in a really slick way, you're going to get like a little, a little bit of this, a little bit of that sprinkled in, but the chemist who's created that product has made sure that everything is compatible together and that the final re product has been researched on the skin to be effective. So those are some of the biggest differences. But a lot of times, actually, I'd say 99% of my patients that have or and clients online that have switched from, say, a department store, beauty store products, they end up saving money. See, hear that, people? Book your consultation with Rachel today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, in food, we, we look, I definitely, you know, look at the nutrition label, especially when I'm shopping and Good. trying to make sure I avoid certain, um, you know, pro-inflammatory ingredients like say canola oil yeah. and, and, you know, instead opt for something like olive oil, avocado oil. So mm -hmm. not to point out canola oil, but if you could kind of maybe give us a um, one ingredient that you would consider in skincare product to be the equivalent of canola oil in foods. 
All right. Well, it's going to be way more than one. So let's just break this down for a second. So in food, we got our nitrates, we got our spices, we got our MSG, oils, high fructose corn syrup, heavy metals snuck in there. Yes, I read that in a naturopathic journal once that uh, mercury can actually be found in some high fructose corn syrup uh, products, probably from the chemical processes of actually extracting that from the initial product that is natural. So we're looking at avoiding things like parabens, sulfates, phthalates, artificial dyes, fragrances, and not testing on animals. So those are the type of products that I work with. You want to avoid all of those, including chemical sunscreen filters. So that's why the Tizo is so great, is because it's a mineral-based filter. And last year, there was a big overhaul with a lot of sunscreens, but they're still available. And the chemical filters, which are usually mixed in like a foundation, a BB cream, CC cream, moisturizer, uh, their chemical filters and they interfere with our hormones and our coral reefs. They actually enter the bloodstream. Wow. That's a lot. I'm going to have to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just it. Like, how are you supposed to be able to keep track of that and, and keep up with what's, what's coming out? I mean, a lot of aesthetic nurses and doctors, they are immersed in the aesthetic world. What I'm actually immersed in is not only that, but also the biohacking world as well. I'm actually part of one of the big health collaboratives that the biggest biohacker we all know of is part of, right? So uh, I'm, I'm in touch with, with what the top functional medicine providers are talking about, what the top you know, genetic analysts are looking at right now. So it's very different, the perspective I have, than say your traditional uh, aesthetic physician or nurse. And uh, speaking of uh, things that are on the rise and, um, you know, something that has kind of come into the forefront for me recently has been peptides. Mm. And I've seen them popping up all over every beauty, you know, skin cream out there. And it's, you know, it, they sound amazing. So mm. I'm curious, and I will say, you know, true confession, I do use a, um, a skin cream with six polypeptides. And, you know, I don't have any data that it actually is making my skin look younger, but I, I, you know, I've been using it. And so I'm just curious, like, what is the deal with peptides right now? Is it, is it just a fad kind of like CBD or do you think there's some merit there? Should we be seeking out creams with peptides? You totally read my mind with the whole CBD topic. I'll talk <laughs> about that because it's important too. So with proteins, peptides have been used for a long time. Copper peptide is one of the best peptide out there for helping to reduce pigmentation in the skin and overproduction of melanin. And I actually just got off the call with uh, uh, Beth O'Hara. Talk. She's a top uh, nutritionist and genetic analyst. And she was actually talking about mast cell activation and a few other things and, and how pigmentation is can actually be uh, basically a indicator. So brown spots, age spots, that your body has a hard time clearing different cells out, right? So copper peptide is awesome, but it's got to be formulated in a way that it can actually sink into the skin cell. So that's why when you put your faith in a lot of these medical grade skincare products, as opposed to the products that you're seeing a lot of marketing on, there's actually a reason why when I talk about uh, some, some product recommendations for people. They're like, I've never heard of that because the company focuses more on marketing and research, sorry, because the company focuses more on research and development as opposed to marketing, right? With the companies that you've probably heard a lot of. So mm -hmm. peptides, awesome. But what it comes down to is it's not just about being on an ingredient in the back of the bottle because there's no back of the bottle marketing release. It's whether that company is making sure that that peptide is actually getting absorbed by the skin. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. I know. I, I feel like I have kind of fallen into that trap of beautiful marketing. It seems like mm -hmm. the right price tag. Right. It's a little expensive, but not completely unaffordable. And so it must be working, right? You know, mm -hmm. everybody else and it's Instagram worthy, but I think that's when you start to buy into the idea versus the science. And so that's kind of, you know, you want to make sure you actually have something that's science backed. And that's yeah. really interesting to hear. It has to absorb in the skin, you know, just because it says it has six polypeptides. Is it really working? 
Yeah. I actually have a really cute little uh, bonus episode on my podcast, the Rachel Varga podcast with Dr. Betsy Greenleaf, very, far, very uh, <laughs> appropriate last name, but we, she actually is a, a, a urogynecologist, highly specialized gynecologist with the subspecialty in urogynecology. And she's been looking at CBD for pain, right? With her pelvic pain patients. But she's just very well versed in the the whole you know CBD world, and there are a number of different CBD pathways that have been discovered. You can just Wikipedia this. And we talked about it in the episode, but there's more and more being discovered all the time. I will share with you though that CBD has not yet made its way into medical grade formulations. So that should be uh, that for me. I'm definitely taking that as a big cue as. You know, I feel like there's still some science to be worked out, especially with understanding the pathways. That's really, really great to hear because Mm -hmm. that, in addition to peptides, has been all over beauty counters, you know, and and CBD and makeup. And so you're just like, "I, I just heard about this six months ago. Is this really something that has been well tested, you know, I also have to think about that as a factor. Like what is the yep. long-term totally. ramifications, you mm-hmm. know, before I put mm-hmm. this on my body yep. and um, to segue into, you know, on your body versus in your body, I adopted a uh, really low sugar kind of ketogenic diet just about two years ago, and I've really stuck to it. Okay. I found that it, it helps me with energy. And most importantly, I haven't had a breakout in two years. I swear to God, Woo-hoo. it's insane. Like I, I would occasionally get, you know, that the redness and the, the pimples and the blackheads and all of that. And since changing my diet, I have seen a drastic change. So I'm curious if you could just give us, you know, a couple of foods that you think might be helpful for people to help with their own, you know, beautiful skincare. Yeah. Well, first of all, you heard us talk about this, like right at the beginning of this interview, you got to figure out what's right for your physiology. Mm-hmm. And so what I did, uh, I actually worked with a nutritionist. I was getting ready for a really cool photo shoot where I actually got to scuba dive with sharks. It was so much fun. But I wanted to, you know, look my best. And so I met with a nutritionist because, you know, my hubby's a pro athlete. We eat really well already. But I was like, okay, I feel like I'm doing everything right, like low carb, whole foods, super healthy. But what's going on? Why am I still holding on to this extra weight? So I did this mega 200 point questionnaire. She basically figured out that I do not do well with grains, obviously not dairy. So those are going to be big ones. So it was identified that I work well with a really good modified paleo diet, but then you can take it a step further, meet with a nutritionist, do that questionnaire, and then do some labs and genetic testing. That's how you're really going to optimize things. But the biggest inflammatory foods, I mean, this is not going to be new information for a lot of you forward thinking individuals, which I'm super proud of you guys. You want to avoid your dairy. You want to avoid your prepackaged, you know, lifeless foods. Stick towards whole foods, right? Foods with, with lots of enzymes. But my husband doesn't do well with tomatoes and green peppers. And those are, you know, forms of produce, right? So it really just depends on what your constitution is. But you know, basically if it grows in the ground, you do want to make sure it's organic as well. That's a little tip. Grow what you can. We, we've been growing our own greens because if I were to eat the amount of greens that, if I were to buy the amount of greens that I eat, I'd be spending at least like five, ten dollars a day on produce. So grow what you can. Oh yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. We have been, um, huge fans of our farmers markets out here. And especially yeah. during these tough times, we're, you know, really trying to support those local farmers. Awesome. And, um, and yeah, I, I couldn't agree more about the getting your labs done. And even there's, I don't know if you've ever experimented with um, Viome, but it's a gut microbiome test where, you know, you send away a sample and then Mm -hmm. you actually can get tailored, like, you know, foods that just don't work well with your microbiome. And so Mm -hmm. I, you know, found out that I, tomatoes don't actually work for me like your husband. Mm -hmm. And so I've, since eliminating those from my diet, you know, I've, I've felt a change as well. So I I think that there, the science and the, you know, the information is out there. You just have to seek it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And on a little like tangent to that, if you are trying to conceive either yourself or with your partner, I had a really cool interview with Dr. Melissa Vandermissen yesterday. She's a natural fertility expert. 
And she said when people meet with her and they're having troubles conceiving, the first thing she does, she does a gut test. She asks for a stool sample and people are like, why the heck are you checking out my stool? Because I'm trying to have babies and I can't. Well, you need to just look at the environment that you are trying to form a little one in for both partners. Very important that men do this testing as well. So I'm speaking to your male audience here. If you're having trouble conceiving, it's not all on the woman. I mean, we house the woman. Like, <laughs> yes, we're pretty friggin' awesome. But it also come down, comes down to the quality of the sperm that's from the man. And you know, for, for men and women, you want to give yourself a couple of months of really optimizing your body before, you know, ideally before trying to conceive. That makes so much sense. And thank you so much for pointing out that it's, you know, takes two to tango. It's both those microbiomes. They've got to be in check. It's true. Yeah. It's kind of funny when you think about it, but yeah, so they're not getting away with this, you know, exactly. They're not getting out. That's awesome. Um, and so let's, let's go into the, the bedroom. Right, and talk about it. sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I tend to be very restless in my sleep. I sleep mm. on my side. I sleep on my back. Is there a proper position to kind of avoid the wrinkles? And, and is there a recommendation for how to sleep? Oh my gosh. Okay. So first of all, everybody's got to go on YouTube. You're probably watching this on YouTube or listening to this on podcast here. But there's a really good TED Talk on how the brain detoxes while it sleeps. So I was talking to Dave Asprey on this in a recent interview, and he was saying how many of the experts that he interviews says to sleep on your side for the optimal drainage from the toxins in your brain because your brain shrinks. And basically we don't have lymphatic um, you know, nodes in our brain. So the way it detoxes is through that shrinking when you're sleeping, and then everything gets flushed out. So he says that top experts say to sleep on your side. I will tell you from an aesthetic standpoint that sleeping on your side will cause accelerated aging on that side you sleep on. So for example, if I were to sleep on my right side, what would happen is I would compress the tissue to my temples, my cheek, corners of my mouth, my jawline. I would be squishing down the elastin and collagen, the fat and the bone faster on that side. So that side over time is going to become smaller. Also, if you take a look at your face, put your hand on your face and go like this. So you're mimicking sleeping and we're all looking really cool right now. But any <laughs> vertical line that we see here, especially in the lower eyelid. Yeah, there you go. We got, mm. got some happening there. So if you're a side sleeper and you get that crunching of the skin, say right here, or that line right here uh, to the corner of your mouth, lower eyelid and vertical lines here, those are all signs of sleep sleep lines. So vertical lines or sleep lines, uh, other horizontal lines, things like that. Those are typically, those are typically from your muscles. So Anthony Hopkins is a really good, um, he's a really good model for why not, why you shouldn't side sleep. Because if you look at his forehead, one side of his forehead is significantly lined with vertical lines. Very, very interesting. So what I like to sleep with, and I have done so uh, for pretty well, it's just as long as I've been with my husband, which is, you know, going on, I think like 10 years or 11 years, I've lost count. Anyways, is uh, the Envy pillow. And no, I'm not paid to talk about this, but this is a really good sleep aid. It's actually considered a device. And uh, I'll give you the link to get access to it. But basically, it is a memory foam product. It's made in Canada. It's recommended by top germs, plastic surgeons, aesthetic nurses like myself to not only give you your spine the right alignment, even if you're side sleeping, to optimize that drainage, but it's going to reduce the facial compression. Really cool stuff. I, you know, I, I remember hearing you mention that on another podcast, and I think it's it's time I invested in one for sure yeah. because I. I've been waking up with the, the classic, like, you know, wrinkle from mm -hmm. your, your pillowcase and it's, and it, you know, it's so consistent on the left side. And so my biggest fear is, is getting that Anthony Hopkins kind of look. Um, so I think, you know, if you can make it work sleeping on your back, yeah. that's the way to go. So. Yeah. Or if you have to side sleep, use that pillow, but mm -hmm. the price point, it's about 200 Canadian. 
I had my last one last like six or seven years. I lost count. I had it forever. It was still good. And the makers of Envy were like, Rachel, we got to get you a new one. So last time I saw them in, uh, in San Diego for a big conference, they sent me home with a new one, which was amazing. Um, but this is just a really great company. They also actually made some really cool copper infused masks, mm. like reusable masks right now. So they have a really cool initiative happening with that. Uh, but anyways, um, it, speaking of, yeah, speaking of copper infused things, I, um, I mean, I don't know if this is complete BS, but I saw in, you know, a department store, a, um, a pillow that actually had like copper infused in it. And so they made you made it seem like this is going to help you with aging when you sleep is that's probably was it, was it the envy pillow or I wonder if it was not, it was, yeah. it was like a quarter of the price. <laughs> yeah, it was probably a ripoff. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> so you pay for what you get. Yeah. Right? Especially maybe it was a quarter of price because it was manufactured overseas. And we all know the health issues with buying things from countries like China. Mm-hmm. And if you don't yet know what I mean, go ahead and go on Netflix, watch the series called Broken. Mm-hmm. Your mind is going to be blown. You're never, ever going to want to get any household supplement, beauty, self-care product off Amazon or eBay ever again. I know. I know. And I have gone through my entire cabinets and, uh, and drawers. And I have thrown out so much stuff since I started listening to your podcast because of all the crap that I have bought from Amazon over the years because it comes in two days. Well, not anymore, but <laughs> you know, or it's really cheap and you're like, well, this, you know, everybody else is, it, got, it has a thousand stars. It's gotta be, or a thousand ratings, you know, it's gotta be great. Mm-hmm. You're so right. It's you, once you open your eyes to what those manufacturers are doing and, and those practices, you can never unsee what you've seen. So. And the same goes for paid endorsements. So I did a recent interview with Dr. Seth Gerlach. I love the guy. And we were talking about supplements. And I was talking about this beauty supplement that's just been you know, made super popular. I'm not going to say the name of it, but basically celebrities, they have this gummy in their mouth. And so I, what I did was I went on the website, scrolled down, as seen in Cosmo, as seen in L, you know, as seen on this show. Well, they probably paid for those placements. They're not earned media, if you will. And then I went down, okay, where are these products actually like manufactured from? So it says manufactured in the USA, but it doesn't say where the ingredients are sourced from. So a lot of times these companies can actually be sourcing their ingredients from again, overseas. So just because it's manufactured in Canada, US, or in Europe, where things are a little bit tighter, they could be getting their ingredients sourced from really low quality places. So that's really important to note as well. And what was really crazy is this product was actually uh, tested by an independent uh, company called Labdoor. And two of those gummies actually exceeded the daily allowance for lead. Wow. And that you brought up a really good point. There are so many independent party or, you know, third party tested labs that look at the efficacy of supplements and creams. And, you know, once you actually start investigating, you can be shocked at what you find, you know, and, and you're so right. Paid endorsements can, can only go so far. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not sure if you had a chance to listen to the interview with Francois Vix. He is actually from Paris and he makes the product line called Glycidin Skin Nutrients. And they've been around the, around for 10, 20, you know, 10, I think 15 years, but they have, uh, you know, in my opinion, just a great nutraceutical uh, mm-hmm. that uses SOD. And uh, basically he's telling me that they don't even have to do research on their products as all these independent companies are doing it for them. Mm-hmm. There you go. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, people need to be held accountable, you yeah. know, and I, I think that's, that's really important, especially in this day of age. Speaking of this day and age, um, we are kind of living in some weird times right now, Rachel, like mm. this there, you know, with the quarantine and shelter in places all across, you know, the United States and, you know, in Canada and globally, we are, you know, in the midst of a crisis and their anxieties are high. And I would love to kind of talk to you about 
maybe some skincare routines people can start implementing now because I, you know, first thing you got to reduce your stress. I know that cortisol can, you know, cause inflammation, which can cause skin irritation, mm -hmm. but you know, people also on the bright side, maybe have some time at home that they wouldn't normally have. So maybe walk us through, um, some, you know, potential skincare routines that people can do right now to help keep their skin looking fresh. And I'm just going to plug in my, um, battery for one second. I don't know why it got disconnected. Just one second. I really want uh, Katie to, to actually answer something first. So I'm just going to wait for her to come back. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to answer your question with a question for you first. Oh, perfect. All right. We're good to go. So before we started recording, you said something really interesting to me, which really helped to brighten my day in these quote unquote unprecedented times. And you shared with me why you like tuning into my content. So I just want to hear you say that again. And I want the listeners to hear why you're tuning into my content at this time. Yeah. There's so many podcasts right now that are all talking about COVID-19 and the coronavirus and they're helpful and educational. But mm -hmm. for me right now, I am craving normalcy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm craving different content that is a distraction from the everyday routine that I'm going through right now and mm -hmm. the everyday anxiety. And so when I tune into your podcast and I hear your familiar voice, you are a ray of light and, um, and Thanks. you're bringing, you know, educational, informative content that really helps break up my day, break up my week. And it gives me something to look forward to and something exciting and new. And so that is something that I am so grateful for to be able to turn to you every week and, and hear something new that you have to share. It's one of the reasons why I'm also, you know, producing videos like this on, mm -hmm. on my channel, because I think there is so much noise out there mm -hmm. and it's really important for us as educators and, um, and humans to be able to share good stuff too. And so, um, so thanks to you, hats off to you for continuing to do what you do, because it certainly brings me joy every week. Well, thank you very much for sharing that, Katie, and that, you know, that really touched me. I really do my best to align my, my professional work with what's in alignment with my body, mind, spirit, energy. So for me, being able to show up on a podcast is really kind of bringing that together, and I'm doing it in an effort to help to balance the shadow right now. There's a lot of shadow. There's a lot of energy around the specific virus that if you get sucked into it, it's going to keep you there, especially if you're a resonator like I am. So I'd be really, really careful. So when we're talking about skin and, and ways to, to help ourselves at this time, this is very important, what you're spending your energy on. I know this might sound a little woo-woo, but when you start to work with as many people as I've worked with, you start to clue into the common threads. And the common threads are my most vibrant patients are men and women. 60 plus that newsflash they've done the inner work they've cultivated that radiance i just did a uh, an interview with the uh, editorial contributor from goop magazine and she interviewed me as well and you know she's a multimedia uh, journalist cbs fox news all this stuff stacy Lindsay. so what's really cool right now are all these top reporters making their own content right because when you're tuning into sort of mass media right now, it's pushing agendas. You don't need to be conspiracy theorists to know that the news right now is keeping you in that high beta. So before we started this call, guess what? We took it down a couple notches, right? Mm -hmm. to, to, that's really important for you to keep your being in a different way of being. So you're not going to be the 99% of people right now you're going to be setting yourself apart a little bit. And sometimes I've had this feedback with some of the content I'm putting out. I'm not grounded in what 99% of the women in the world are doing. 
no, I'm not. And neither would I want to. Would you want to be following the same lifestyle practices as 99% of Americans right now? No, <laughs> you wouldn't. So we already talked about basic skin routine. We have a little bit more time, some of us more than others, to really focus on our self-care. So that's why I really like to talk about ways to get access to this stuff through my e-store. You know, I'm not putting this stuff out there in an effort to you know, capitalize on this time, but I recognize people can't really get to the stores as easily as they could before, right? And so you know, I'm pivoting, I'm evolving, looking at ways that I can help people. So keep your basics, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub. Do your microneedling at home, but be guided on how to use it appropriately. So I'm happy to help with that, especially male listeners. It's something that guys love to do because they don't always like to go into the clinic and get things that are gonna make their face red. And also in these flash, we have more time to do these things at home because before, you know, we were constantly commuting from the house to the office, this, that, and the other thing, we have more time to be at home. So we have back that commute time. So my biggest takeaway, watch where you're eating. Don't get the quarantine 15. Make sure you're spending time with your loved ones. Even if you can't see them, I really miss hugging my parents right now. Make sure you're still staying connected. Tune into what feels good for you. So for you tuning into my videos, my podcasts, that's what this is all about. It's not an escape because believe me, I hosted a three hour 15 expert health mini summit right when this stuff started happening to help people understand what top leading experts are doing at their, in their homes to boost their immune systems and also to maintain a happy, healthy, and sane household. So I am putting resources out to provide insight into that. However, I'm sort of balancing it with, with the light, if you will. Yeah, that's great stuff. And, and such pertinent information, you know, especially the, the FaceTiming and, and connecting to people because, mm. you know, I mean, even just seeing your face right now, you know, I just, yeah. it, it's the, the community aspect I miss so much, you know, I'd love to go to my doctor right now, which is something I would never say, but you just, you miss the, the everyday things that you were so accustomed to doing. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've been FaceTiming everybody. I've been sending people like just random video messages, just, you know, 20 seconds, like, Hey, I miss your face. And I'm thinking about mm -hmm. you. And you know, those things are, I think are, are just at least helping me get through this time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure everybody else, you know, can, can figure out what works for them. But, um, but I've got, I've got some tools in my toolbox and, and your podcast is one of them for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just interviewed my husband recently. Uh, I'm going to be uh, dropping my podcast interview with him. I've been meaning to interview him for years, but you know, he's sharing some of his, some of his tips as well. Uh, you can just look him up, Gabriel Barga. He's pretty rad human. And what he's telling people is to have something to show for this time. That's great. That's great. What's, what is he doing right now? Uh, well, well, he's on YouTube. He's obviously not fighting right now because his next event was supposed to be in Italy. Well, obviously that's not happening. Um, so we actually finished filming our, our masterclass, Unlock Your Vitality. So just, just follow my social. I'm going to give you guys the, uh, the updates on that, but we're going to be actually making that available pretty soon. And for all you guys out there and, and women that want to have your six pack, we're actually going to be uh, giving it a cool little like free cheat sheet on how to start to get a six pack. So use this time at home, whatever time it is, if it's during this time or, you know, after have something to show for the time that you have at home, have something to show for your evenings and weekends. If you're, you know, you don't just want to Netflix and chill, but you want to be constructive in your time. There's nothing wrong with that. Be creative, find what lights you up, all that cool stuff. Yeah. My fiance is like, I'm going to be like Hugh Jackman by the end of this. I was like, okay, keep working, honey. Yeah. But I mean, don't be fooled. I miss like my four buying, getting out in nature, going to the gym, all that stuff. I really miss all that outdoorsy stuff yeah. that I typically do. I hope that we're all, we all come out of this a little bit more grateful for all those mm. things though, you know? Yeah. So it's all as a black swan. So if you think about black swans, we had internet, mm -hmm. World War II. We got this. And what happens in these black swans is that these are mega points in human, love, human evolution. So, you know, just let's wait and see. I think it's already starting to happen.
I, I agree for sure. Um, so you talked a little bit about inner radiance in some of your older patients. Mm. And I would love to, you know, I know that we've talked and we've covered a lot about skincare and anti-aging and the, and the things that are, you know, on the outer shell, but let's talk mm -hmm. about what you've seen, what type of internal practices you've seen your clients do that's helped them glow from within. Yeah. Well, I, I do a bit of a deep dive on this in my ebook, Unlocking Your Vitality. You can get that at rachelvarga.ca. And then that 30 video web series actually filmed on a very magical Salt Spring Island here. And I share because, you know, it's going to be hard for me to say it in a minute, but basically it's the body, mind, spirit, energy cultivated practices. And it's, it's very much balancing three types of exercise, your, your cardio, your stability and flexibility, and your strength and conditioning training. Mm -hmm. When you balance those, those are really key. So I did yoga like every day for six months. I didn't hit the gym while I was studying for the MCAT. And I went to the gym after those six months and I was super weak. But as you age, sometimes running can become more difficult on your joints. Sometimes lifting those heavy weights can become difficult on your joints. So as you evolve and, and age, it, you don't have to be afraid of aging. You just have to age proactively and you need to learn how to evolve and adjust to what your body's constitution is telling you that it needs at that time. Mm -hmm. What about meditation? Do you find that working with a lot of your clients as well? Maybe you can talk yeah. about that. Yeah. That thread of the common thread I see interwoven with everybody is having a meditation and spiritual practice 100% of the time is mm -hmm. it's in them. Yeah. yeah. So it's not religion. It's a spiritual practice. So for me, I'll share, you know, my background. Uh, my great grandmother was actually one of the first female ministers in Canada. So what lights me up and what, what keeps me grounded and what I surrender my anxieties to is that is God. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without sounding too all encompassing, you know, well, what is that to you? What is God to you? If you seek, you'll find. Yeah, no, that's, that's beautiful. And, um, you know, I, I think that myself too, I've, I've really evolved into a more spiritual being. I was mm. raised Catholic and you went to, you know, church and everything, but it was so dogmatic. And I find that my faith has kind of come through different different elements, different earthly elements, you know, you, you just kind of look out when it's a beautiful day and you just kind of feel the, the universe and how, you know, it's speaking to you. And I think that there's, there's so much that you, there's so many different aspects of faith and, um, and spirituality that you can really tap into. And it doesn't matter what label you put on it. You know, that's what I like mm -hmm. to tell people. So so yeah, that's, that's, um, that's, you know, wonderful to hear and, uh, glad it's working for your patients. Um, I would love to play a quick, uh, game or a round of a lightning round with you, if you don't mind. I'm ready. Um, we're going to call this beneficial or BS. Am I allowed to curse on your podcast? Well, actually it's a clean podcast. Okay, perfect. So, we're going to yeah. say BS. <laughs> yes. And we'll leave it at that. Yeah, very good. <laughs> So um, I, I just kind of pulled a couple of um, products that I had invested in uh, over the years, and I just kind of want to ask you about the efficacy of them, and is there any validity to them actually working on helping your skin? So let's start, and I actually have them here. Do you mind if I show? Go right ahead. <laughs> so I have this yellow light therapy device. I'll put it on. For those of you listening, I'm sorry, but it's a big uh, square box with some yellow light. I've heard that this is great for uh, collagen production. Is, is there any merit to yellow light and your skin tightening? Well, light is actually routinely used in rejuvenation, light, energy, all that. So if you're thinking about light, you're looking at visible light. So that yellow is part of the, the, vis the visible spectrum of light. And it's at a certain, it will penetrate a certain nanometer depth of the skin, whatever that visible light is falling. I'm so glad I took physical sciences, gen chem, organic chem, biochem, just so I can answer this question for you. However, there's different frequencies of light. So there's different, you know, the nanometer wavelength, but there's also different intensities and things like that. 
So what you want to do is support companies that make these type of light devices that actually do research and they'll show you the research and then have a, other independent companies do research on their products as well. Okay, great. Cool. So this wasn't a waste. <laughs> and then um, what about some, I'm not, I don't want to show the uh, brand, but what about some collagen uh, protein powders that have hyaluronic acid and biotin in it? Well, I mean, I take collagen powder pretty much every night and I love it because it helps to seal your gut. And I have actually noticed my skin look a little bit better when I started to do that. But I will say that collagen powder isn't magically going to produce collagen that's going to go in your fine line or wrinkle right here. So it's kind of a balance of everything. Yes, do everything you can internally with your nutrients, your supplements to support your body, but then also what are you doing topically? Mm -hmm. And what about hyaluronic acid? Because I see that in a lot of creams and serums, but I've now also seen it in a lot of protein powders. So is that something to take to ingest or to put on your skin topically? Hyaluronic acid is actually naturally occurring in our skin and it degrades in our skin naturally with an enzyme called hyaluronidase. So say, for example, someone gets bad lip filler or bad cheek filler and they got the dark lips. Well, if they show up in my office, I'm going to want to dissolve that with hyaluronidase. So that's what dermal fillers are primarily composed of. It's basically a sugar molecule. And having hyaluronic acid in your skincare is awesome if it's formulated properly. So there's different sizes of the hyaluronic acid molecule. There's different weights. So certain sizes and weights of the HA molecule are going to be able to better integrate and get into the skin cell. Because if those um, HA molecules are too big, if the molecular weight is too heavy, it's too big and bulky to get into the cell. So what you want to look at are companies that actually have research to back up you know, their efficacy, not just having that hyaluronic acid on the back of your product. Mm. What about ingesting it? Do you recommend people do that as well? It's not going to hurt. Hyaluron hyaluronic acid is uh, actually found in a lot of our joints, uh, in particular our, around our spine, and we do need that. So basically when you're eating a lot of collagen or there's HA in there, it's going to really support your, your body in general. Great. So definitely not a bad thing to have. Awesome. All right. <laughs> This might have been a waste, but I got this col collagen eye mask, um, and I'm curious if there's anything that it's actually doing when I'm sleeping. If I mean, I guess it depends on what side I'm sleeping, but they say there's collagen infused in it. Is it actually doing anything for my skin at night? Mm, I don't understand the science behind that one. <laughs> That's how I'll add that, answer that. But even actually wearing a face mask, it is going to even provide a little bit of maybe pressure on the tissue. But if it's blocking out light, that's going to help with your, you know, your body's ability to actually get better sleep. Mm -hmm. But in terms of actually having a material that's infused with collagen and having it be placed next to the skin and have it transmit that way, I'm just not sure the mechanism of action for that. Yeah, that was probably a dumb purchase. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, um, I don't actually own one, but I was thinking about them because I've seen them um, on Instagram, of course, but uh, jade rollers. What's the deal with those? Well, you see this? It's my finger. <laughs> Can you do this? Can you poke your own face? Can you massage your own products? Yeah. Yourself? <laughs> yeah. 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 So there's nothing uh, jade is doing. But. Oh, I get such a kick out of these, right? The benefit is that it's going to allow people to spend more time on their self-care. But do you need to spend 30 to $70 off something that just looks great on Instagram? Mm -hmm. mm. No. Instead do of I have one? Money. I don't have one. Am I going to buy one? I'm not going to buy one. But what they'll do is, you know, they'll feel really nice. It's going to help to support lymphatic drainage, but you don't have to spend money to do your own facial massage and facial lymphatic drainage. Just look up how to do it online. Great. Yeah. Instead of spending your money on a jade roller, go book your consultation with Rachel now. Happy to help. <laughs> Happy to help. Um, cool. So, um, Rachel, what is on the horizon for you? What, I know you mentioned a couple of, uh, projects that you're working on, but maybe you can just kind of tell us what's getting you excited these days. Working with people all over the world, connecting with people, finding ways that we can continue to keep the economy going, how I can help to support local entrepreneurs. Actually, right after this, I'm launching, uh, 
a really cool pineapple body oil on my e-store and she's a local female entrepreneur. So I'm looking for really cool ways to continue to support my community, uh, both in the health and wellness with what I'm putting out on YouTube, on Instagram, on podcasts. So that's really my intention behind everything always is how I can be a support to people all over the world, be a light. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to, you know, send me a message much like what you did, Katie. You just reached out. You said, hey, you made my day uh, because these are interesting times. There's some people out there that just don't have the best vibes out there. And so the more that we can really support one another during these times is really great. So on the horizon right now, just loving connecting with people one-on-one -on -one through virtual consults. It's really fun. Very different than the free ones that you're seeing online right now much like the free ones that you'll typically get in a clinic because I spend an hour and I get into a lot more than just what a typical aesthetic nurse or physician is going to get into as you've been able to glean from this interview. That's just touching the surface of what I like to dive into. Uh, what else? Uh, my ebook, my masterclass, all that cool stuff, collaborating with my husband as a pro athlete, getting his perspective. Your male listeners are going to love that. So it's not just me yabbering. It's me getting this information out of my husband, who is just like the epitome of health, vitality, vigor, strength, power, determination, all of that. So that's going to be super rad. So just follow me, Rachel Varga official uh, at unlock your vitality. I just started up that brand new one. And if you're also a provider uh, and you want to pick my brain and learn how to integrate this stuff into your practice, you can follow me at rejuvenation training, send me an email info at rachelvarga.ca. Love to hear from you as the more that we collaborate and the less we're in competition, the bat, the, you know, the more love and light we're going to be able to share during this time and help each other out in our communities. So well said. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me and, and to share your light and your knowledge with my audience and your audience. And it just was wonderful um, to, to be able to collaborate. Uh, and yeah. is there anything else you wanted to add or share at this time? I would say, you know, thank you for reaching out and being a light yourself and encouraging me because, you know, I'm, a lot of us are really just doing the best that we can right now. And it just meant the world to hear from you and the interview. This was really great. As soon as I saw your questions come through an email, I'm like, oh yes, these are questions I get all the time. People are going to love this. Yeah. So happy to, happy to help and, you know, support you in any way I can as well. Awesome. Oh, well, it was so, so nice. I hate that we're wrapping up, but uh, I hope to hear from you soon. And uh, thank you again for, for your time and for your radiance. Oh, thanks. And cultivate that radiance. You can't buy it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's the crazy part. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, Katie. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. That was so fun. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I, I know. I, I feel like I could talk.